What's going on everybody? Today I'm going to be reviewing and showing you how to play the game Conquest of the Empire. Uh, this particular version of the game came out in 1984 for Milton Bradley and it is for two to six players. Now this is a war game and uh, the object of this game is you are going to try to, to be the remaining Caesar standing and have all the other Caesars be captured either by you or by your opponents. Uh, you're going to be buying certain things such as roads and different soldiers and boats and you're going to be attacking uh, on sea and on land. And this game, as you can tell, is set during the days of the Roman Empire. So, let us show you Conquest of the Empire. Okay, everybody, let's go ahead and uh, show you uh, the different components. Uh, my wife and I are in the middle of the game, and as usual, she's beating me. So, uh, But let's go ahead and start with the components. Right here you have your game board, and uh, this is set back uh, in the Roman Empire time, uh, way back when that, whenever that was. And uh, all of these different lands here have different numbers on them. The ones that are in red, such as Numidia, uh, are going to be ones where you're going to start your army in the beginning of the game. Now, depending on uh, how many players there are, uh, you're only going to be able to select uh, the certain lands. So for a two-player game, you would only be able to choose from Hispania and uh, Egyptus over here. Right here you have two different types of coins that you can use to buy things such as armies and buildings. And they're very, very cool. Uh, they're made of plastic and they got these nice little uh, designs on them. Uh, this is a control marker, and there's different control markers uh, for uh, each of the different armies. And what you're going to be using these for is you're going to use these uh, to mark land that you own, uh, such as here. And the way you uh, take control of the land is you just simply will uh, move your army into here. And uh, if you decide to move your army out to another land, you'll just simply place one of these markers over here to just say that you own it. And uh, here's mine. It's just a little yellow symbol, and there's another one for the blue army, etc. This here is your Caesar piece. I believe there's six of these, um, and they're marked with this little scroll. Uh, if you lose this piece, you're going to lose the game, so you don't want to do that. Right here is an army general. Uh, there's, uh, each army is going to be receiving six of these. Um, you're not going to be able to move any of your pieces unless uh, you have this general moving along with you, and what they're going to do is form a legion, which I'll talk about in a little bit here. Uh, this here is your infantry piece. Uh, this can move one, but again, you need to have a general along with you. Right here is your cavalry piece. Now, a cavalry piece can move uh, up to two spaces. Um, same thing, you need the general in order to help move them. Right here is a catapult. Uh, they move one. They're very, very powerful. And again, you'll need a general to help move them. You have the city piece here, and uh, you also have a fortification that you can place underneath. Uh, now, if you own a city, that is going to give you a uh, five tribute uh, per turn. If you own the fortification, this is going to give you what is called a combat advantage. And again, I'll talk about how that works. Right here is a road, and there's a short road over here and a long road. Uh, what you can do with these is uh, you can build cities along adjacent lands that you own, and this is going to help increase your movement. Typically, what would happen is a movement would go like one, and then the next land it would be two. But with a road, what you can do is you can just move one all the way to the end of where the road is. I can move in a whole legion from here all the way to there for one. So that helps with the movement. And right here are galleys. Uh, this is your boats, and this is going to help transport your legions across the sea. Uh, now, what the object of this game is, you're, you're going to try to be the lone surviving Caesar. And there's six different action sequences that you can do in a game. And the first one is move. Now, the way movement works is you have to have a general in order to move any of your pieces, such as the infantry, the cavalry, and the catapult. What, you can, what this will do is what is called form a legion. An example of a legion, you have your general, and you've got four cavalry and a catapult. Um, you can, of course, have cavalry in your legion, and the legion can be uh, comprised of one general and seven different pieces. So with the general, he, by himself, he, he can move by himself. He can move two spaces like this. Uh, but his movement is going to be limited if he is moving pieces that are only allowed to move one. The uh, infantry would hold the general back one, and he'd be able to move like that. Now, when it comes to the galleys over here, um, you're allowed two different movement actions in order to get them. Uh, one would be you can move two different sea zones. These sea zones are separated by lines. That would count as one. Um, you can uh, go in here and then put a legion of people on the boat. Uh, you could put an entire legion and you would just move the legion along with the boat like this and then sail back to sea like that in the same sea zone. That's another thing you can do. Or you can pick up uh, your legion and then move uh, 
here and then here, then that would constitute two movements. Uh, now your Caesar also can move two, but really you want to keep him protected because if you lose the Caesars, you're going to lose the game. Second thing is combat. Now the way combat works, let's just say we had something like this. Um, you've got two different sides here, and ultimately what you're going to do is you're, we're going to pick one of your soldiers to fight one of these guys. Now, it doesn't matter what the soldier is. Ultimately, what you're going to be trying to do is you're going to try to roll a certain die number uh, to kill him, and each of the different uh, characters in the army have different numbers. Now, the general does not fight. If you end up killing everybody and the general is by himself, you're going to end up capturing the general, which I'll talk about in a little bit. Here's how it works. Uh, the infantry you can kill off with a roll of four. The cavalry, you can kill off with a roll of five, and the catapult, you can kill off with a roll of six. So basically what you would do is you just say, okay, I'm going to attack this infantry with this guy. And uh, you would just simply roll. I roll the three in this attack, so in this case, nothing would happen. And then the person who is defending would get to uh, choose somebody and attack them. Now, if he had rolled, say, a four then this guy would be killed off and he would be out of the game. Now there's another thing in this game called combat advantage. What that is going to allow you to do is going to allow you to add one to your die roll and there's two ways that you can do it. For each catapult that you have um, on your legion that is going to add one to your die roll. So let's say uh, I wanted to attack with my infantry and I want to attack this infantry. Typically you would have to roll a four but with the combat advantage of the catapult you would only have to roll a three. Now it is actually possible to have such a lot of high combat advantage, say you had six catapults, that you wouldn't even have to roll because you automatically have six points, you can pick whoever you want. However, if your catapult, if, uh, your catapult gets killed off from the opposing army, it's going to knock the combat advantage back one. Um, now another way you can get combat advantage is if you have a city in your defending land. So let's just say I happen to have a city over here. Um, this would add a combat advantage of one, and I have a catapult here which would add another combat advantage of two. So this would add two to my die roll. So if I wanted to say I happen to have a cavalry over here, and I said I'm going to attack your cavalry, typically a cavalry will go on a die roll of five, but with two combat advantage I only have to roll a three. So if I rolled three, I would kill off the cavalry like that. And so basically it just goes back and forth um, until uh, the general is left, then he gets kidnapped. Now you can also retreat if you're fighting. Um, you can retreat, and the way you would retreat is you would have to go back to a land that you own. If you do not own this land, then whoever owns it, you're going to have to get permission uh, to go there. You can have alliances in this game as well. Now if you kidnap the general, you've got two choices. You can either take him out of the game or you can hold on to him and have the other player pay a ransom for him. Um, and you can take him out anytime and if you hold on to him, the other player can offer a ransom whenever he would like. Now when it comes to sea battle, it works it works pretty much the same way. You would just choose whoever you want to uh, attack with whoever and you would roll the die and again it would take out the player. So let's say the infantry wanted to attack this infantry. He does not have a combat advantage so he'd have to roll a four. Let's just say he happened to roll a four so he would end up taking out one of uh, the infantry. Uh, now the only difference is uh, in this is that the cavalry is going to be killed off by a four or higher, as opposed to a five because he's on a boat and he can't run. Um, you can still get the combat advantage uh, with the catapults. Uh, now the galleys themselves can actually attack um, and defend. Um, you can just say, I want to attack uh, this guy with the galley. Now uh, you cannot kill off a galley until all the other characters on the boat are destroyed. And in a galley, you would just simply have to roll a three or higher. Unless you had a combat advantage, then you would end up rolling less. Okay, the third action sequence is collecting tribute. Uh, now, what you're going to do to collect tribute is you're going to look at all the numbers of the lands that you currently own. So let's just uh, start counting. My wife right now has a, has, earns 180 tribute um, on her turn right now because she owns 180 points of land. And you just simply count out the numbers, like there's 10, there's 20, there's 25, there's 30, there's 40, etc. And then you would also count the cities because uh, they count as five points too. So you go 5, 10, 15, 20, and then add it all up. And then you would go ahead and have, get 180 tribute paid to you. And my wife right now has a lot. Uh, now the next stage is what is called destroy cities. Um, now the only time you would want to destroy a city is if your opponent is 
about to attack your city and he has a pretty good advantage. Um, if he ends up taking over a land that has a city, he's going to get all of the advantages of that city. He's going to get the tribute points and he's also going to get a combat advantage if he happens to take over a city that has a fortification on it. So in that case, all you'd have to do is just take the city out, but you would then have to move back your uh, tribute points by five. Uh, the next stage is purchase new pieces. So you would just simply uh, take all of these tributes that you earn and just start buying whatever you would like. And here's the chart. I'll just show it to you. A city normally costs 30, fortified, 50, fortified cities 55, a Caesar you can't buy, generally you can't buy. The catapult is normally 40, the cavalry is 25, the infantry is 10, and the galley is 25. Now there's a thing in here called inflation. In this area, all the prices that I just gave you, they're going to, uh, that's how much you'll be able to buy the different pieces for. But once you get into this section, um, it is going to go up. What's gonna happen is that the price is going to double. So when you get into this section, a city, for example, would be worth 60 points. I'll just show you the chart right over here. Um, as you can tell, it doubles here when you've reached the first spot. Now, when you reach this area, it's going to go up again, and it's going to uh, go up in these kind of increments over here. So it's going to get more expensive the higher. Um, and then what you'll do is you'll just simply place your pieces. Um, all of the pieces that you buy are going to end up in your home province. So for green, it would be over here. Um, for your boats, you would end up uh, putting them here on the coastline of your home province. And the cities you can build on any land that you own. Now you can also do player alliances. Um, if you have more than two players, you can just simply say, hey, you know, would it be okay if we just made an alignment? And, uh, you know, and that just simply means that you guys agree not to attack each other and you can move back and forth in each other's land. You can do that at any time. Now, if a Caesar ends up getting captured in this game, uh, obviously, if you're playing a two-player game, if you capture his Caesar, that is going to end the game. But if there are more than two players, uh, this is what is going to happen. Um, you will move your marker forward on the tribute scale by the amount of the territory conquered. So any uh, territory that the army conquered, you're going to get all of that. Um, you're going to collect 100 talents as a bonus, which is really, really cool. And then you're going to own all of the defeated player's units remaining on the board. You can use them as you would your other units, so you're basically going to get his, uh, his whole, whole army. You can't use the captured Caesar as a general. You'll just keep him as a prisoner. Um, you can't place newly purchased units in the home province. They still have to be placed in your original home province and also can't build a galley in the color of the captured Caesar. So anyway, what's gonna happen is you're simply going to go ahead and uh, follow these six combat steps, and uh, the game's gonna just go back and forth like this, and the winner of the game is gonna be the one who is the remaining Caesar, so my final thoughts on Conquest of the Empire. Uh, well, this is a member of the Game Master series that Milton Bradley put out, and it has five games in there. This game is not hard to learn, um, and I really like this game a lot. Uh, I absolutely love the tribute uh, the tribute coins in the game. They're very well made. Uh, they look really, really cool. Um, now, the little soldiers, uh, this has a typical problem where they have the lances and the swords that break off rather easily. Uh, when I got this game, and I got it on eBay for about $40, uh, which is actually a really good deal. Um, a few of the lances were broken off and I've super glued the ones that I found and the other ones uh, I just used toothpicks and some uh, silver and gold sharpies and super glue to fix them and they look good. Another thing I like about this game is the that uh, it offers you a lot of choices. Uh, once you end up collecting the tribute, you have to decide, you know, do you want to get boats? Do you want to get um, the different soldiers? Uh, do you want to build a city? Do you want to fortify the city? Because you'll be looking on the board and you'll be thinking, okay, hmm, what do I need here? And you can go a lot of different directions as far as what you want to buy. Um, I like the inflation aspect of it too, because a lot of games, it can get away from you and one person will end up owning everything and getting so much money, but the inflation makes it harder for them to just build and build and build and build. Uh, so I definitely like that aspect of the game a lot. Um, I like the combat system as well. Now, uh, some people don't like it as much because uh, you can end up having a bunch of catapults to just jack up the combat advantage. Um, and a lot of people say that doesn't really work for them. But of course, you can just buy uh, catapults of your own uh, to try to even it out. Um, and there is also another version of this game that came out uh, not too long ago, and uh, they actually changed up the combat system. They've updated the board and they've updated all the components and everything. Um, don't know. I think it costs a lot to buy, though. So uh, as far as which version should you get, it really all depends on you. Uh, but for me, I don't mind the combat advantage so much because uh, if you can kill the catapult off, that's going to basically decrease the combat advantage. Um, and of course, the cities will, uh, the fortified cities will add to it as well. Um, 
pretty cool that you can destroy your cities. That's an interesting step that I've never seen in a combat game before. Um, I could definitely see that happening if you're gonna, about to get invaded and there's really not much chance that you can uh, take over. Um, so, very cool. Um, I would definitely recommend this game. Now, this game typically goes for about $80. I ended up getting this game uh, right after my birthday, and I was pretty surprised. Uh, it was a buy it now for $25 plus shipping, and the only thing that was wrong was, with it, was there was a little hole here in the box, uh, which I just simply fixed with another corner of the box. I guess some varmint got into it, um, but uh, I went ahead and I got it uh, with the little birthday money that I had, and I'm definitely glad I did. This was a game I've been wanting for a while because I'm a big fan of Roman history. And uh, I would definitely recommend it if you're a fan of uh, war games and old school war games. And, of course, if you're a fan of, like, Roman history or whatever. Definitely a very cool game. I like the way the system works and all the action sequences. So, guys, that's my review of Conquest of the Empire. Have a great day. Keep on gaming.